Well, we are trying to explain that, uh, you know, we are 27 countries and that each country has a very different system. And, uh, it's, and the European Union is made of 27, it's not one system. So we're really trying to work against this generalization, which, which simplifies for, for the Americans or for anybody outside the European Union the, the situation in Europe, but it doesn't reflect the real situation. There are 27 different situations. And, and like I said, you know, especially here in America now with the, elector, with the election campaign, there is a lot of uh, talking about Europe and the European welfare uh, system. But actually, if you look, if you look at, the, at the countries in Europe, as you make the example of Germany, well, Germany is doing much better in terms of employment, in terms of growth than, than the United States. So there, you know, to generalize this is Europe isn't working. Uh, I think you, you just look at these different countries and you see that uh, it's not the case. So what, what we are doing is we are, we are, first of all, we are looking at the debate that is taking place in the US, and there were a few negative uh, comments and articles like that. But we have also seen then, on the other hand, very positive articles that actually came and, uh, out and uh, highlighted that, uh, that this was a simplification of this concept, you know, and uh, like there was, um, I saw an article just uh, this weekend in the Washington Post uh, written by a German journalist uh, on um, on uh, on these topics, and I saw he got like a thousand five hundred uh, uh, comments on his article. So it was really it's it's really uh, it was very interesting to see that it uh, it prompted so many reactions from both sides, positive, negative. But it's a debate. The European Commission or the European Union bodies are not giving. Uh, a, a, one size fits all advice. Every situation in the, in the 27 countries is different. So it needs to have a different, if you want, mixture of policies. And for Greece, uh, now they are negotiating about more pension cuts, about more cuts in public workforce, um, the, about a, a reduction of uh, contributions for on, on the health system. So there are different measures that they are trying to implement in Greece. In Italy, we'll do the same thing, or we are already doing the same thing until the government, and if I say we, it's because I'm Italian national, <laughs> but uh, the Italian government is also taking the same, the same measure. So it's for sure that uh, we have to see that the public expenditure goes down. And we, they have now uh, clear objectives in, term, in terms of how much that public deficit should be compared to GDP per year and also how much the public debt should be. So there should be no more uh, structural deficit than 0.5% for the future. So as you say, yes, it is more for the future. We are, uh, we are focusing, but we, are, we, we need to regain competitiveness, as you said, and especially Italy is one case where uh, it has lost a lot in terms of uh, competitiveness. So we are focusing on that. But at the same time, for the, the crisis that we have now, where you said we, we need to solve the problem in Greece now, that's the issue of the firewall. And so for that, as you know, we have a, a European stability mechanism that will come into force in July, in, in the summer, uh, where 500 million euros have been set aside for that. And there are talks now whether the money that was put into the, another stability fund, the ESFS, whether that money could be used, could be kept there, and be added to the money that we have already in the stability mechanism. So that both together would be about 700, 750 uh, probably, uh, and, and that might be enough. But this is something that is still being discussed. Yeah, we are definitely worried about that. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's very unfortunate because especially you from Ireland, Irish people were always very pro-Europe and were, were one of those um, countries where the support that the European Union had given was very, very much valued and appreciated and it was always, always said and publicly stated. So it's, it's really a concern that there are populations that, that will become more alienated to the European project. And uh, I don't think we can do much in Brussels. I think it belongs much more to the national leaders to explain to their people why it is good that they are still in the Europe, 
why it is good that they stay in the Eurozone, and why we, it's necessary to go through these austerity measures to be more, uh, that will be more beneficial in the longer term. So I, I think it's really the responsibility of the national leaders to explain this. And the national leaders, they all come to Brussels, they all decide together on the European measures, so they, they all have a responsibility when they take these measures, also when they are back home, to explain this to the national countries, to the national uh, public uh, audiences. Uh, but yes, we are worried about that, absolutely. If you look at countries like Sweden, Denmark, those countries, or if I look at Finland, which 10 years ago had a very difficult economic situation, I don't think that now they don't have very good wealth, a very good welfare system, but at the same time they are very competitive. They invested a lot in education, they invested a lot in innovation, and 10 years after you can see positive results. So I don't think that necessarily uh, the cutting of welfare has to go hand in hand with, uh, with more competitiveness or, or, you know, that you only get more, you only become more com competitive if you have less welfare. I don't think so. I think you have countries in Europe where you see that there is a, a mixture of both and that you can actually have both. In, in, in Greece or in this country in, or in Spain, there, there are different issues. As I said, in Italy also there is less competitiveness and there will have to be a reduction of the welfare system. But I, I think, I hope very much that the focus will be on investing in areas which, which will produce not immediate benefits, but medium term benefits. So if you invest in education and innovation, it's not something where the year after you already see new jobs and new fruits, it is a longer term investment. And what is so, what is so difficult when you are in times of crisis is to look not just at the one year, but to look a little bit beyond. And, and not, but you want, as a political leader, of course, you want to have jobs immediately. You, you are not in power for 10 years. So, you know, it's very difficult for those leaders to be responsible enough and say, okay, well, we have to invest in longer term, we have to invest in this because this is going to give the real benefits and not just go for short term advantages.